My dearly beloved in Christ, in past years, in early July, I have spoken about a wonderful saint whose feast we celebrate this week on July the 9th, and that is St. Maria Goretti. And while it may be a bit redundant, I would like to do so again for several reasons. First of all, she is a model for our own times. Pope Pius XII called her when he canonized her in 1950 the St. Agnes of the 20th century. But also today is the anniversary of her death in 1902. She was attacked by an 18 or 19 year old young man named Alessandro Serenelli who wanted to entice her into sin with him. And at her adamant refusal, he became furious and stabbed her 11 times. He used for this crime not a normal knife, but what would be like an ice pick. And he plunged this dagger into her body 11 times. And as she lay there in her blood, she tried to escape and she reached for the door and he stabbed her three more times in the back. So 14 times altogether. And then the little baby started crying and her mother came in from the field. Her father had died several years before. And he looked, she looked at her daughter and said, Who has done this to you? And Maria said, Alessandro did it, mother. He wanted me to sin. And I said, No. And she went on to tell her mother that twice before he had tried to seduce her into sin and she refused. So St. Maria Goretti is a wonderful example for us of purity, of avoiding occasions of sin, of love of virtue. Like another St. Philomena, she is a virgin and a martyr. Now, sadly, Alessandro, after this crime, of course, was arrested, taken to prison, and he remained entirely unrepentant for at least several years. I believe it was at least three or four years later, he was in prison and one night he had a vision of Maria. And she held forth to him a bouquet of roses or other flowers, 14 flowers, symbolizing the number of times he had plunged the weapon into her body. And he said he took the flowers and they They disintegrated in his hands. It was a dream. But it was to him a sign that Maria had forgiven him. And of course she had, even before she died. And this led him to a complete change of his life. He lived out his remaining days and only died in 1970 in a Capuchin monastery in Italy. He spent his remaining years in this monastery as a lay brother. And one of the things that he wrote before he died or stated in interviews was how he had fallen to such a point because he had purchased the bad magazines of his day. He would even put up in his room indecent pictures. And his father did not reprove him for this. And it was that bad literature that led him into these bad thoughts and then to committing this horrible crime. Now it happened on the 5th of July, but Maria was taken to the hospital and it took several hours in a cart over the rough roads to get her to the hospital. And the doctors operated, but she died about 24 hours after the attack on the afternoon of July the 6th. And before she died, she received the last sacraments, and then the priest asked her at that time, do you forgive Alessandro? And she said, yes, I forgive him. I want him to go to heaven. She did not want him to lose his soul. Even, he later said, when he was attacking her, she kept saying to him, no, Alessandro, no, it is a sin. You will go to hell. Those were her words over and over, rejecting the temptation, rejecting the enticement to sin, and persevering in her virtue, in her determination 
following the motto of so many of the saints, death rather than sin. And she was one who lived that motto. Maria had only made her first communion within the past year, maybe a year before. But lives of her, the lives of the saints or lives written of her point out that she took the reception of Holy Communion so earnestly. She'd never been to school. She was taught by her mother, who was also illiterate, all of the truths of the faith. And she was very strong in her faith. And so she had made a very devout Holy Communion and promised our Lord that she would try never to sin. When she was martyred, she wasn't even 12 years old. Eleven and a half. And it has been said that she is the youngest saint ever to have been formally canonized in the church. Canonized in 1950 by Pope Pius XII. Then again, she died in 1902. So Maria Goretti is a wonderful model for us to persevere in virtue. Sometimes we can say, I'm surrounded by so many temptations here in the 21st century. So many occasions of sin. And that is true. But it is not an excuse. Remember that God's grace will always be there if we do our part. And what is our part? First, first and foremost, we must avoid all unnecessary near occasions of sin. From whatever source, we must avoid the occasion of sin. If we put ourselves into the occasion of sin and then expect God to rescue us, that is a presumption, a sin of presumption. As though we don't have to do our part and God's grace will will rescue us and take care of us. No, we have to do our part. His grace will be there if we do our part in humility and avoiding the occasions of sin. Also, avoid curiosity. Remember how the the devil tempted Eve in the Garden of Paradise. Take and eat this fruit. She said, well, the Lord God told us we cannot. And then the devil said to Eve, why? Did God tell you, you can't eat this fruit? And she, and here is where she began to fall. She said, well, God says, perhaps we will die. Well, God didn't say perhaps. He said, you will die the death. And then the devil appealed to her curiosity. And he said, no, you won't die. You'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, up to this point, Adam and Eve only knew good. They didn't know evil. But now he appealed to her curiosity. Well, what is evil? What is it like? And so sadly, she ate the fruit, but she gave in to curiosity. And how many people fall into sin because of idle curiosity? Wanting to know, wanting to see. What we know is evil. What we know is bad. Overcome that curiosity. Reject it. Mortify the eyes. And all the senses. So, avoiding occasions of sin, overcoming curiosity. But we also must make use of the means of grace that are available to us. First and foremost, the sacraments. Frequent confession and Holy Communion. Sometimes you might put off confession and say, well, I can't think of anything to confess. And that's not a good idea, to put off confession. We should try to go to confession even every couple of weeks, even weekly, because of the wonderful graces of this sacrament. We can always confess past sins, the sins of our past life with deep contrition, and earn the sacramental graces we need to strengthen us against temptation. And frequent Holy Communion, devout reception of the body and blood of our Lord in Holy Communion. Also, remember the power of prayer. We should all pray the rosary faithfully each day. The rosary, which has even greater power today because of the world in which we live than it had centuries ago. When Sister Lucia was asked about the rosary in an interview in the 1950s, she said that it was revealed to her that God has given and Our Lady has given extra efficacy to the rosary because we are faced with more dangers. 
And so we should never let a day go by without praying the rosary, at least five decades of the rosary, as Our Lady requested. But also your morning and night prayers, your daily routine of prayers. And in addition to these formal prayers, we all should form the habit of ejaculatory prayer. Choose a prayer that appeals to you. Of course, there are the simple holy names of Jesus and Mary. There's the beautiful prayer on the miraculous medal. O oh, Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Or we can choose an ejaculation from the litany of Our Lady. Mother most pure, pray for me. Mother most chaste, etc. Or one of the other wonderful invocations. So choose an ejaculation or two and say them during the day, especially when tempted. Say them over and over again. And you'll be able, with God's help, to conquer the temptation. Remember also the importance and the power of self-denial, penance. Penance is not something we should only think of during Lent. It is a means of subduing our fallen human nature, gaining the upper hand, and being able, having the grace to conquer, the willpower to overcome. St. Paul says in today's epistle how he groans and how he is experiencing this, this slavery to corruption, this, this heaviness of our fallen human nature. We ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption as sons of God, etc. So he was very much aware of the difficulty in this battle of the spirit against the flesh. But this should lead us to humility, reminding ourselves, I'm dependent on God and his help. Of myself, I cannot do it. And so I must humble myself. I must have recourse to the means of grace, prayer, the sacraments. I must mortify myself, practice self-denial. Also make use of the sacramentals. Holy water, very powerful sacramental. Bless yourself with holy water when tempted. Sprinkle it in the room. Make use of blessed objects of devotion, scapulars, sacramentals like medals, rosaries, and so forth. Also develop a devotion to one or several of the saints who were known for their purity. There, of course, is the wonderful Saint Philomena, Saint Agnes, Saint Maria Goretti, Saint Aloysius, Saint Joseph, our Blessed Mother above all, but the saints that were known particularly for their virtue of purity. Pray to them. They are eager to help us. They want to help us. If we but would learn about them and cultivate a devotion to especially a saint that appeals to you in particular. So let us today, as we call to mind the death, the martyrdom of this saint of the 20th century, Saint Maria Goretti, let us resolve to imitate her, to prefer death to sin, to be resolved to avoid all occasions of sin, and to remember and never doubt that with God's help, all things are possible. And we are fully capable, with the grace of God, of conquering the sin of impurity, living a pure and virtuous life, that we might one day share the crown with St. Maria Goretti and all the saints who persevered and who conquered sin and temptation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.